Okay, hi everybody, I'm John Lincoln and welcome to another Ignite Visibility University. Today we're talking about Facebook. I'm gonna give you an overview of Facebook, pretty much everything you know you need to know about how the platform is broken down. Uh, some, some really good stuff in here, general stuff, but stuff that I think that you'll be interested in and probably some, some nuggets of information that you've never even heard before. So Facebook, you know, billions of users on the platform, definitely a way that you can make revenue and drive leads to your website and, and use it in a very successful way for marketing. So let's dive into it. So with Facebook, it's basically broken down in the following ways. There's pages, of course, for your business, right? And that's one of the main ways people use, use Facebook. But in addition, there's also groups. And groups are actually used for a lot of businesses as well. And there's, there's some, some subtleties between the two. In some cases, you might wanna choose a group over your page uh, actually for your business. I'll talk more about that. Then there's of course apps, and then there's fundraisers, events, and payments, okay? So when you're, you're looking at all these things, when it comes down to business marketing, you're looking mostly at pages, right, as a way to promote your, your business or, or your, yourself or whatnot, your groups for business. Apps, you can actually make an application for Facebook, and I've made near 50 different apps for a lot of uh, different purposes. And then fundraisers if you wanna get money, and then of course events if you're a local business. And payments, all that does is it just tracks the payments that you've made on Facebook. So, so not really anything you're gonna be super interested in. Then of course there's also moments too. Now when it comes to moments, all that is is just an app that, that Facebook has created that allows you to share photos with your friends and family. So not really super important for businesses, okay? So let's jump into pages. So when you, when you look at you know, Facebook from a business perspective, you're generally looking at pages as the most important thing. Now pages are broken down by local business, company, organization, brand or product, entertainment, or cause or community. So those are the different segments of pages. Now, with pages though, you really don't get a ton of exposure unless you have a big community or unless you have a really good edge rank score, okay? So edge rank is critical for Facebook. If you wanna be successful, if you wanna have high engagement, you have to have an excellent edge rank score. I'm gonna talk more about that in a little bit. Now, what's nice about groups and, and the reason that a lot of people choose them is because if you're in a group, then you get a notification from the owner of that group if they do an update. Unless, of course, you've turned off notifications. So, so really, you know, pages, it's like you have to do advertising or have a great edge rank score with that individual user in order to really get your information in front of them, right? Unless, of course, you're doing live and, and that shoots to the top. But for, for groups, um, you automatically get those updates in front of them. A lot more engagement, a lot more notifications, okay? So when it comes to groups, there's a couple different types. There's public groups, right? And that's anybody can join. There's closed groups where anybody can see it, but not anybody can join unless they're invited. And then there's secret groups where you can't find it and the only way that you can make it in is if, if you're invited and somebody sends that to you. And then there's one other type of group on Facebook that not a lot of people know about, and that's a buy and sell group. And that's a group where you can basically buy and sell and, and trade things with other people for money. And there's some pretty active ones that, that go on there. Okay, so that's kind of the main difference between those two. Um, when you get into apps, what people are doing a lot of is they're using applications to run contests. Um, they're using applications to build interactive games. I remember I was working with a very large jewelry client and we built an interactive game um, that was really, really successful on Facebook. So it's very easy to create an app and to launch that. And, and you can do it something as basic as just a little form, or you can do something as advanced as um, a, an interactive game that people will enjoy. Okay, so now we've talked a little bit about the difference between these most important things. I'd like to get into ads for pages. So one thing that you need to know is that if you're going to be doing a page, unless you're just an incredibly you know, popular public figure or a brand that people really, really wanna follow, 
you're probably gonna need to do advertising. So I highly recommend that anybody have an advertising program, um, one for building the size of their community, and then another one for acquisition. Now, when I say acquisition, I think you should be thinking about macro and micro. So what I mean by that is that if you're an individual business and you're looking to drive revenue to your website, then you should have an ad strategy that does that through Facebook ads. And in addition, you should, and that would be a macro goal. So looking to accomplish that, that sale. You should also have a micro goal. And when I say micro, I mean something like capturing somebody's email address or getting somebody to their website just so you can do some remarketing to them later on. And you, of course, should have KPIs with all of those things. So Facebook is awesome for capturing emails and you can use emails for so many different things mind you you can use emails to remarket to people right throughout the internet you can use emails to um, uh, create uh, look-alike audiences on Facebook where basically if you upload over a thousand email addresses it will create a profile of, of your demographic and then you can basically replicate that over and over and then reach out to more and more people so email addresses are really powerful. You can even use them to target people through Gmail, target people through Google AdWords. You can use it for your content remarketing. Um, so if you have Facebook posts, you can email these people, excuse me, um, blog posts, you can email these people over and over so that they, they see you as a thought leader in the space. So that would be an example of a micro goal that you'd use Facebook ads for. So when you're running Facebook ads, you're gonna do that through the business manager, right? And, and they basically break it down in a couple different ways, right? So generally you're either doing ads for your page or you're doing ads through for your apps or you're doing ads for an individual post, okay? So that, that's usually how people are looking at it. Now, if you get really advanced with ads or, or just you know, semi-advanced really, you're gonna be using the power editor. So the power editor is one of the main ways that people um, manage Facebook ads, unless of course they're using a third party tool, okay? So when we get into ads, um, basically they've broken it down like this in the system. So you've got awareness, consideration, and conversions. And Facebook's actually done a really good job of breaking these things down into buckets. Okay, so when we say awareness, we're looking at ads that boost posts, promote your page, um, reach people near your business, create brand awareness, or increase retention. And what's really nice is what Facebook has done is they've laid it out in this way so that when you're choosing your ads and you're setting it up, you actually get to pick the intent that you're looking for uh, from the awareness perspective. Now on the consideration side, they've got send people off of Facebook, right? That would be an ad where you're, you're driving somebody to your website or to a landing page to uh, accomplish a goal, right? You can get app installs, you can raise event attendance, get video views or collect leads, right? They've done a good job. All of these are around goals and any good marketer needs to have goals. Conversions, increase website conversions, increase app engagement, get people to claim an offer, promote product catalog, get people to visit a website store. So what I'll say is they've got all these things, but the most important thing is, you know, anybody can go on and set up an ad on Facebook and anybody can lose a lot of money doing that. You actually really have to be, have a lot of expertise. You have to dial in all of the, the individual um, things like your demographic, right? Where are, you, where are you targeting these ads? And that's really the next step. So what you'll be doing in the next step, picking your audience, your placements, your budget, and your schedule, and then the format, the media, and the, uh, that you're gonna be using. The format of the media, or, or is it gonna be text? So with these things, for example, if you're doing um, a Facebook ad, you, you, you know, you might want to launch a video, right? That tells you, that says how amazing, you know, your product is. And then that pushes you to a landing page. That landing page um, then, you know, tries to capture your email address. You need to be thinking about what your goals are and then working backwards and then making sure that you have pick the right ad type, you've got the right audience, and you haven't gone too broad and you're just not blasting it out all over Facebook where you're, you know, you've got really low you know, cost per click or cost per impression, but you're not getting the conversions. And then you've got to have a really good ad and format because otherwise you won't have good engagement. So that's a little bit about Facebook 
uh, ads for pages. Again, you want to be building the size of your community, micro and macro goals through Facebook, all tied around ROI for your business. Okay. So with that being said, I'd like to talk just a little bit about things that you want to think about inside of Facebook. So first, wrap your head around this. In, inside of the Facebook search box, right, people search inside of Facebook, and that's becoming a bigger thing. And you actually can run search ads inside of Facebook, but they've got results for latest people, photos, videos, shop, places, groups, apps, and events. And that's kind of how they've broken down all of Facebook. So those are the types of content that you can create, okay? So when you're reviewing a Facebook page, okay, what you wanna look at is the type of content that's been created for that page and then the overall page community, okay? So now I'd like to talk about that. So if you're reviewing a page, Okay, what you're going to be doing is, and I call this a social media sentiment analysis, where you kind of get the, the feel of the brand and, and what they've created via Facebook and, and how they can target better things. But when you're doing a social media sentiment analysis, you're going to want to look at the sources of traffic through Facebook Insights that are coming to the page. So Facebook Insights actually tells you, did you get a bunch of traffic to your Facebook page from Forbes? Did you get a bunch of traffic to your Facebook page from your website? And, and then based off of that, you can modify the content that you're creating so that it can be more adhered to the type of, con or the type of traffic that's coming to the page. Make sense? You also wanna review your tab analytics. So inside of Facebook, it's gonna show you each of your individual tabs and how much traffic each one gets. If these two are really highly trafficked and people like it and you're getting higher engagement, focus more on those. If these ones aren't getting any engagement, cut them and you know build a tab that's better, right? Um, it's gonna show you your demographic of people coming to your page, right? Not your community on the page, but people coming to your page from these other traffic sources. And again, that can be really helpful. One of the things I like to do is I like to go inside of Google Analytics and I like to look at the demographic reports and then based off of those demographic reports, take that information, juxtapose it with the Facebook page, and then look at your overall kind of social media demographic and then use that to create your personas and your content so that you're, you're targeting things effectively. With internet marketing, it's all about these little subtleties. You can see your actions on the page. So on Facebook, any page has the action button right here, right? And, and that can be for any type of call to action or goal that you have for the business, right? So you can see how many actions are taken on the page and what demographics are taking actions on the page. So with a very large client recently, we saw that people 18 through 24 were taking the most actions on the, on the, on the Facebook button that they had. So based off of that, we were able to refine that uh, strategy for the Facebook banner and for the content so that we could squeeze out more revenue for the client. It's, gonna, it's very successful and something that we is part of our program here and something you should be looking at. You can also see um, where your fans are online. You can see the best posts that you've had. So if you go inside of Facebook Insights, what you're gonna wanna do is look at your best posts, right? And, and filter that by engagement, right? Filter that by virality and, and look at the ones that have performed the best, then take that and use that information and apply it to your future editorial calendar, right? This is the name of the game. If people are seeing that your posts and they're clicking on it and engaging on it, you're gonna rank higher on Facebook. You're gonna have to pay way less for Facebook ads and you're gonna uh, have much more higher organic reach. So these little tweaks really count. So look at your best posts, look at your overall demographic and then make sure that you're using the right tags and hashtags so that you can have a higher edge rank. So now we talked that we kind of like hinted at edge rank a couple times. So what is edge rank? Okay, it's the algorithm that Facebook has in order to show your posts to your community, right? And so this is what it's made out of, right? So edge rank, they say it's EUWD, right? That's how you look at edge rank, right? So the U is for affinity score, right? Between the creator and the viewer, right? So for my Facebook page or for John Lincoln Marketing Facebook page or the Ignite Visibility Facebook page, I have an affinity score between the person who's seeing my content 
and then my, my own uh, individual page, right? And the more interaction that you have there, the higher the score is, the lower the lower, right? So that's the affinity score. And then there's the weight for the edge rank type, right? So videos have a certain weight, right? Text has a certain, has a certain weight. Uh, text with a certain type of tag has a certain weight. Images have a certain weight, right? So based off of this weight and the affinity score, Google is calculating those, or excuse me, Facebook is calculating those things together and then, and then determining where this is shown, right? And then finally, there's a time decay factor. So when was the post sent out? And they look at when the post was sent out, the weight, and then the affinity, and all those things together. And then based off of that, that determines what's shown there, right? So you see how important this social media sentiment analysis is to your edge rank score. Make sense? Okay, so this is a basic introduction to Facebook. There's a lot to this platform. You can definitely make revenue on it. If you're just looking to get started, these are my five steps for you here, okay? With, with kind of like any given new page that you're evaluating or even starting from scratch. So when you get started, make sure you pick the right platform, right? Make sure you're, you're on the right one. You could be wasting your time. I'll tell you, I see so many of these like multi-level marketing or franchise. In some cases, it's better to have a group than a page. You might be on completely the wrong thing. And if you're on a page, are you using the international Facebook pages, Facebook page global, or are you using um, you know multiple pages for location or just one main page, right? These are things you need to think about. Facebook has a huge local aspect. So pick the right platform. Once you've done that, build a community, of course, you know, through a, a variety of ways such as ads and then a, a hopefully organic. Analyze your data constantly, every week, be tweaking it, know your demographic, who's on there. You know, these are real people who are seeing your stuff, right? And if you've got 10,000 followers, you really need to take a look at those analytics. Create an ad strategy and a content strategy at micro and macro conversions, right? As well as the community building side and then tie, tie the entire thing around the website goals. So that's, that's how you want to get going. So this is an introduction to Facebook. I hope that this was interesting to you. I'll cover more advanced stuff and go more in depth in, in future videos. And I hope you have a great day. See you next time.